lot of roots here. Um, and you may know Maggie Sayer. She is the CEO of um, Key Federal Credit Union. She's also a comp. She graduated from Marathon High. Um, and she lives in Marathon. And um, she teaches college for St. Leo University. And um, she holds several degrees and certifications, but she's most proud of the titles Mom and Coach. So here is Maggie. So this is going to be interactive. We're going to talk. I'm going to I'm going to make you talk to me. Um, we're going to cover budgeting, but within the budget talk, um, we're going to start at the ground and like you know what is what is a budget? How many of you have done it? Uh, when was the last time you you did a budget? Uh, how often are you doing them? Um, and I'm really going to look for some feedback because the last time I did this, it was for the group that was with Bahama Village and they had some different needs. You guys are looking for either down payments, you're looking for how to save, you're looking for maybe how to uh, save some money, uh, cut some expenses. We're going to try to cover it all. Um, and then at the end, I have kind of a worksheet that I'm going to ask you to kind of go through your bills and go in your head. And then I'm going to send you home with some send homes that you can take and you can photocopy and you can, because if you're doing this right, you're going to do it again and again and again because things for SHI happens. Um, and, and when it does, that's, that's when this tool will be uh, most rewarding, most helpful. So we're going to talk about what is budget, some of the budget challenges. There are many. Uh, we're going to talk about how to create a budget, and then we're actually going to create a budget. So what is a budget? Anybody know? What does it look like? Divided is all the money which you make, plus your husband's money, which he made, and minus the expenses, which you spend like insurance, uh, cars, everything. So my budget consists, consists of several like parts. The income and expenses. So even more basic than that, yeah. it's sometimes a piece of paper, Yeah. it's sometimes a napkin, it has some numbers on it, yeah. sometimes they look red for real. And sometimes they look black. Um, that's how basic we gotta go. Okay, sometimes this is just I'm sitting at Outback and I'm going, oh man, I, I made, I wonder how I'm gonna spend that. I'm gonna figure that out. Sometimes it's very organized, and I hope that we'll get to the point that it is very organized because I think you'll have financially, uh, financially, you'll lead a, a more financially well life. Um, so it's a tool, it's just a blueprint. Yours is gonna look 100% different than hers. Yours is going to look different than mine. Mine is going to look different from February to March. Okay, so keep that in mind. This isn't something we come and do today and we walk out and we go, peace, I got it, I got it under control. You're going to keep doing it because hopefully you're going to keep making more money. That's how we, we all hope that it's going to work. And as you make more money, you're probably going to spend more. You're like me, uh, or my kids for that matter. Uh, so it is just a blueprint. It's a moving target all the time. You're, you're adjusting it, you're uh, messing around with it. Why do we budget? Why, why are each of you budgeting? Why, why do you want to budget? So you don't run out of money. So you don't run out of money. Because you don't like it when I don't budget. Well, I mean, kind of sometimes. No, uh, it, we budget to manage our money, but we budget to save, right? Um, because stuff happens and we don't, believe it or not, so the credit union, and this is all I'm going to say about the credit union, the credit, the credit union is a not-for-profit. Okay, so we actually don't want to give you loans if, if you don't need them. Okay, uh, Giselle's going to come in at the next session. She's, uh, she works for me in our consumer loan department. She's going to talk to you about credit scoring. Uh, we'd love it if people weren't reliant on credit, and it was just sort of a thing that sometimes you used and sometimes you didn't, but it didn't keep going like this like we hope that our income does. So we want we budget so that we can kind of limit our reliance on credit. Doesn't mean you can't have credit, doesn't mean you shouldn't have credit, doesn't mean when you go buy a car you should pay cash for it, though that does work in some areas of the country. I don't know too many people here in the Keys that, have, that are that flush that not only are they living in their homes here and driving around in their fully paid for cars in Key West. I just don't know that many. 
so we're trying to we're trying to rely less on credit. We're hoping to save. Each of you have different goals to save. Maybe some of you just want to start. I want to go on a vacation. I want to. I love it here, but I want to go to Orlando for a week. That might be all you're looking to do to save. Some of you, more importantly, are looking to save for a down payment on, on a place. Um, my mom gave me a bit of advice when I was like 14 or 15 years old. She said, how many of you are married in here? Married, spouses, partners, whatever. She said, I can almost pinpoint who of my friends that are couples are having mom money problems. Because you can see it in the husbands and the wives and the wives and the wives and the partners and the... You see the stress, you see it like, ugh. So my father was a commercial fisherman, and back in the day, they'd you know be flush with $70,000, and then they'd be negative $20,000. <laughs> and you'd see the wives, or husbands, driving around in brand new Mercedes, and then they'd be repo. And you always knew when you'd see a couple kind of, sure, they, there were other disagreements, but you could almost always pinpoint, money's probably a problem over there. And you probably know it in your own life. When, when there starts to be money issues, you start to just get a little bit more stress. We're going to try to budget so that we reduce some stress. So what are the budgeting challenges? How, okay, we, we established that some of you are partnered up. Where's the other partner? Making a budget. Okay, maybe, <laughs> making a budget. So you're showing up here and you're like, I'm going to do a budget, okay? Then you're going to go home and you're going to have to advise that person, we need to sit down and do a budget. This cannot be a one person thing within your, your partnership. Partnership, spouse, whatever. Even your kids need buy-in. We'll talk about it. I got two kids of my own. I know all about all the things that they need. Need. We'll talk about that. And it usually doesn't include the $300 pair of Air Jordans. That, that's not really a need. But, so the, the challenges come from spending more than you make. One of, the, one of the talks that I've given, I've given this plenty of time, we get all the way through it and they go, what happens if my expenses are more than my income? Great, fantastic question. I wasn't quite prepared for it. I was like, wait, okay. Well, I mean, if that happens, then you, you go back and you adjust. It does. You, you've done the first step. You've identified the problem. Okay? So the biggest budgeting challenge, spending more than you make. Adjusting, like I said, you're going to have to do this multiple times. This isn't just a one-time shot. I wish it was. Uh, because then wants versus needs. We're, we'll beat it to death. The kids especially. But we all, you know, we, we get the extra $1,000 from a bonus of some sort. And we go, I need the thing. I need the new phone. I've been waiting for it. I need the new shoes. So we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly wants versus needs are. And I'll tell you, living in the Keys, we actually have different, <coughs> we qualify those differently. Um, you know, need transportation. Not everybody in Orlando can get around on a moped. So it, it, there, or, or a bicycle. Um, we'll talk about wants and needs. Saving for the unexpected. So, I was telling Hannah that I have, I have two children. Older one, 17 years old, knows everything. 13 year old, also knows everything, both boys. So, my 13 year old needed braces. He's needed braces since he was like nine. And we keep saying, and I keep budgeting, got it, I got it. Doctor comes back and says, we put the braces on, you can either pay right now, or you can pay over however many periods of time. I do this for a living, by the way. So I said, well, conveniently, I'm not always the one to take him. So I don't want to send him with a check with my mom or send him with a check, whatever. So I said, I'm going to pay for it, $5,700. I thought, you know what? I got it. I don't have it all, but I have some of it. I'm going to do it. Write the check to the guy. That was a Tuesday. Friday night, I'm in my house, and I go, it's pretty warm in here. It's really warm in here. It, as a matter of fact, it's about 89 in here. So I call up, I, I bought my parents' house, my parents bought it from my grandparents. I call up the guy that we've always done business with. I'm like, Steve, you gotta help me. It's 89 in my house. And he says, well, 
That AC's been around since, uh, Irma. 06. I have two in my house. We have a split level. I had already replaced the other one. Didn't remember any of this. Um, and he said, I'm gonna, I'll come out, but it's dead. And I was like, what? <laughs> I said, okay, well, what, how, how, how's that gonna go? And he's like, it's gonna go about $9,000. So, in a matter of five days, folks, I spent $15,000. I don't care how good your budget is, you better not have 15 grand sitting around in a bank account that's liquid. We're, we'll talk about why and what that looks like. But nobody should have $15,000 sitting in a traditional savings account. It should be somewhere else, as was mine. But if it happens to me, I make good money. I don't make great money, but I make good money. $15,000 in five days, I don't know anybody that's prepared for that. So, the saving for the unexpected when you become a homeowner, there's all sorts of that stuff. Particularly if you have children. How many, just so I know, how many have kids? Okay, or grandkids. Allocating for larger expenses, and then the, the last one is consistency. And I ask about your spouse or your partner, because this really is gonna take teamwork. You can't be the one that's saying, no, we can't go out tonight, it's not in the budget. You can't always be that person, or it will lead to stress. You can sometimes be the person that says, we agreed that we were only gonna to go to dinner one, one night a month, but you can't always be that person, or it's gonna cause, it's gonna cause problems. So you're gonna to have to get buy-in from whatever the party is that's not here. Sometimes it's a kid, sometimes it's a spouse. Um, consistency is a real challenge. Just like, um, not that I know anything about it, but just like exercise and just like dieting. I, again, no, zero about any of that. So how do we create a budget? Okay, you said it. You calculate your income. Income equals what? Money, and money, money coming, it's money coming in, it's not money going out. And, and forgive me because I'm sure you all know this, but I just wanna make sure we're all on the same page. Income is money coming in. That's the good stuff. Give me more. Cash, check, ACH, put that right in my account, no problem, that's the, that's the good stuff. But some of you, how many of you are paid the same amount every single month of the year? Same amount. No, no tips, no overtime, no extra side jobs, no extra side hustles. Okay, so to calculate income, we're gonna to have to talk about fixed and variable income, fixed and variable expenses. There actually, believe it or not, there aren't too many expenses that are fixed. Like your water bill, your electric bill, your cell phone bill sometimes. So after we do expenses, we talk about, I mean, after we do income, we talk about expenses. I want you to start thinking about it in your mind as I'm talking to you, like both sides of your brain, one of them can be thinking about what you spend money on, and the other one can be listening to me. Um, we're gonna list every single expense we can think of. And we're gonna go, I think it's about $100. And we're gonna put it down, and if, we, if we're not sure, we're gonna put a little star. And you're gonna see when you walk out of here, a nice hunk of a list. And that's what's gonna get you started. So we create a budget by calculating income, determining expenses, and then we figure out what budget works for us. So there's, there's traditionally three budgets, three budget types. Anybody know what these numbers stand for? The 50, the 60, the 75, what's that? Money going out. <laughs> so here in the keys, when you think about your monthly budget, would you say that half of the money in goes back out to expenses? Or would you say 60% of what you make goes back out to expenses? Or more likely, Let's cheat here. 75% of what you make goes back out to expenses. I'm gonna guess that you're probably here. Um, I've been doing this a long time, 20 some odd years, and I try to sit here and then things like the air conditioner happen and we're down here. 
Okay? So you have to figure out which one works best for you. It's going to matter which stage of your life you're in too. If you are on fixed income and you know, and maybe you paid your house off or maybe, whatever. Maybe, maybe you rent, maybe you rent from mom, maybe, you, maybe you're gonna inherit mom's house. You might be right here, which means expenses, investments, savings. Okay? It, expenses, out. Investments, also out. Savings. Now, investments and savings can sometimes look like this, and this could equal, I'm living my best life. Because what you don't want to have happen is all of this to go savings, 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 savings. Why are you living here? If you don't ever get to spend any money, ever, that's, I mean, I don't, I don't remember exactly what the question, but the, the one, the young woman said, my expenses are always more than what I make. I said, you 100% need to look at your life and see if this is where you're meant to be. We all went around the room. We all want to stay here. We all want to live here. At some point, though, you also want to live a life. So I'm going to recommend that this is what we work with. And then this actually is, I work hard, I play hard. I work hard, I save hard, I play hard. It is possible to be able to do all three. So this is what we're going to go for, but you're going to have to determine what works for you. Okay, income. Show me the money. Gross. What's your gross income? Don't tell me, really. What is gross? What is what does gross mean? Disgusting. No. Disgusting, she says. Before taxes. Now, my son goes to get his first job. He says, I'm going to make $1,000 a month. And when I do, I'm going to buy the new Jordans. I'm going to buy some new golf clubs. I'm going to buy some new... And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you know how much of that you're going to bring home? What do you mean bring home? I'm going to bring it all home. No, I mean, how much is going to go into your bank account? And he goes, I fill out the form. It's all going in my bank account. Mm -hmm. All right, let's sit down. It's not all going in your bank account. So the man or woman is going to take some money from you. And he says, okay, well, how much? $30. I said, out of 1300 he says, why do I work for $1,000 and somebody else gets to take 300 and I said, it is a fantastic question. It's not one we are going to cover today. But that's what happens. So gross, gross is that $1,000. Okay? When you're considering job changes, when you're considering taking on other work, you got to consider that. Okay, sometimes this gets really complex. Sometimes taking on a second job all of a sudden puts you in a second tax bracket and you're taxed more. That's, that's very complicated. What you need to know here is that what you're making, unless it's cash, and I'm not going to tell anybody about your cash. I grew up down here in the Keys, born in 78, so I know a lot about how cash works down here. Uh, but what you are taking home is different than what shows that, you know, my, my gross salary is $50,000. You are not taking home $50,000. That is not what we're budgeting on. Okay, that is, the, the gross is 50, the net is 100% not. Fixed and variable. Who has a fixed job? Fixed, same, you, you said, same paycheck every month within a few pennies, a few dollars. Do you, did you say? You do too? Okay, that makes budgeting really easy. Now, do you have side hustles? No? Okay, so your, your budget is going to be pretty cut and dry other than the expense side. Now, variable. Who gets overtime? Overtime, bonuses, tips. Okay, some of you are not raising your hands. You must have all of the money. All of the money. Now, how many of you own a business of your own? Okay, so you're, 
when you own the business of your own, what you're taking in on a personal side is probably different every month, right? Okay. So that is also variable. So the basic idea here is when you go in to do the budget, you're going to have to identify and know that you can't count on the stuff that's variable. You may have to average out all of your tips for last year, divide it by 12 and say, I'm going to guess that I make about this much in variable income um, per month. Some people, I am not one of them, have rental pieces of property, and that is considered a second line item of income. Though it is fixed, unless it's a year-long lease, where you know you were going to get it every single month, you wouldn't want to put it in the fixed category. You'd want to put that in variable. Questions on that? Anyone? Okay, expenses. First thing we're going to do when we get the little piece of paper is we're going to talk about what our expenses are. It can be nails, hair, I'm just saying. And, and are they wants or are they needs? Uh, oil changes, tires, fuel, all of, all of the things, expenses. We're going to write them all down. We're going to talk about whether they're weekly, monthly, or annually. Um, this is a good exercise in and of itself. How many of you like go out to your transaction history on your account and you're like, oh, I forgot about that. Because stuff comes in, you know, like Netflix, let's say, it comes in on the same 19th of the month and it's $19.20 and then all of a sudden a year goes by, you're still watching your Netflix. But now it's $20.20. 20 cents or 24 dollars and 20 cents that's why this is a, it's a moving target even though it's fixed the, the dollar amount has changed fixed versus variable same thing as the fixed versus variable on income your we gave examples electric company is going to be variable your water company is going to be variable your fuel <coughs> might be variable so we're gonna we're gonna Hit on some examples here in a second. This is the biggest one. It's great that she's here because if you have kids, getting this through to them is very, very difficult. Uh, getting it through to me is sometimes very difficult. Do I need a new AC because I have one or do I want? Um, it's 89. Mm. So, needs. Let's talk about them. Do you guys all rent? Okay, so you need a place to live, okay? No doubt about it, your mortgage and your rent are a need, okay? So when, when it comes time to fill out the form, you're, that's what you're gonna be thinking of. You're also though, as you progress through this, if you get the opportunity to get one of these homes, you need to put that new number in here and make sure it all comes out correctly too. Okay, so your rent and your mortgage, what's another one? What's another need? Live in here. What's another need? Food. 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 Food's a good one. What's another one? Water. Water. Electric. Electric. Communication. Cell phone, internet, you know, whatever. We that used to actually be a want. Okay, that that's a, a, a great example. It used to be a want. You know, they'd say, okay, well you have the doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, well the, that I lived in that era. Um, aging myself, um, that was a want. That wasn't a need. You could go to the library. Well, some of us, some people work from home, and it then becomes a need. Um, how about car payment, transportation? Sure. Now, what happens if I tell you television? It's a want. It's a want. Um, what happens if I tell you going out? Okay, that's a want because it's it's not I need food, so I'm going out back. I don't know why I keep picking out that. Um, no, um, it's a I need food. This side is a want. Electric, water, phone. We covered those. Car transportation. We're going to cover what the difference is between want and need on that one too. Loan. If you do take out a loan at some point, um, the loan is going to be a need. 
you are going to have to pay that or you're going to run into problems. So if you've taken out a loan, car, car loan is, is going to be under transportation. If you've taken out a debt consolidation loan, so you got into some trouble, happens to the best of us when you're 18, 19 years old, um, got, a, got a consolidation loan, you make one payment, it pays all the three payments, whatever, you're all set. Um, then, then that is going to 100% or that will ruin any sort of idea of buying a, a house, okay? So the loan has to be on the needs as well if you have one. Insurance, you guys didn't say anything about insurance. How many of you within your work, your workplace, are covered by insurance? Okay, does anybody not have insurance? Like, do you have it separately? Okay. So that's something a lot of us haven't taken out of our checks and you don't even know it and you go, okay, yay. Um, that's still something you need to budget for because as an employer, that can change. We can say to our employees, we're covering everything but $20 a month for the year of 2023. And they go, great. And then next year we say, well, we're covering it all but $50. Well, you got to adjust that. Even though it comes out of your check automatically, you still have to adjust that. Um, beyond insurance, food, groceries, um, the difference between food and groceries. Somebody's got to cook that stuff. Clothing. The big, big want and need discussion coming. But <laughs> you need some clothes, <laughs> even though it is Key West. We need some clothes to go to work. We need fewer clothes in the winter than most need, so, but we do have, we, we have clothing needs. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Medicine. Don't share with me, I don't want to know. But if you have medicine, you got to know it. You know, there was an a announcement today about one of the pharmaceuticals dropping prices on stuff. That can be variable, but if you know that every single month you take a blood pressure medicine or every single month you have something for your eyes, you need to budget for that. So medicine is a big one that a lot of people forget about. Childcare. I felt like I had won the lottery when my two kids got out of daycare. I mean, at one point it was like 800 and some odd dollars a month and then they, they went off to kindergarten and I was like, oh, whoa. But it is expensive. I don't know what it runs down here. So I live in Marathon, I work down here. I know it is, it's an expense, it's a big expense until they can get to, to school age. But that is definitely a need, because if you're trying to watch your kid and go to work, that's probably a problem. Wants. What are some of our wants? What do we want? HBO. HBO. There must be some good show on HBO. What else? What, what do we want? Vacation. Vacation. Everybody says vacation. And then they say, but you live where everybody vacations. I'm like, yeah, every now and then I just want to get off the rock. So vacation, what else? What are other ones? There's no wrong answer. What's another one? New car. New car. What'd you say? Fine dining. Fine dining. Go, going out for a, a nice dinner. Not on Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you want to go out. What about, we don't, we, we sort of umbrella it differently. What about entertainment? You know, we don't have, we don't have too many clubs that I know of been a while uh, down here. What'd you say? Right? This is, she, she's like, I need some entertainment. Pink's coming out, whatever. The, con the you know, Jimmy Buffett, my parents were living their best life at the Jimmy Buffett concert. Um, entertainment is, is, a, is another want. Gifts. We all love to be great people with the birthday gifts and the, the things and you have to, you have to factor it in. If you're a giver, just put it on a piece of paper and budget for it. Don't think that, okay, I got it all balanced out to dollars and cents and, oh, Sally has a birthday this month. We're going out for drinks. We're covering entertainment, dining out, and gifts all in one. If you're going to do that, then do that. But but you have to you have to budget for it, and if you don't have it in the budget, it's got to be a want versus a need. I am so guilty of the phone thing that it's really hard to tell my boys when they come at me with the shoe thing that that they're like, but ma, you got a new phone. I'm like, but boys, I have a job. <clears throat> so phones, toys, shoes, 
maybe new cars. Um, those are all going to be wants. There we go. The vacation. And also underneath that, the travel. Sometimes a vacation just means going up to Alamorada, having a night, going up, <laughs> staycation, whatever they call it. But travel, travel is, I just came from D.C. I was telling Hannah I came from D.C. this morning. And it is, I traveled during COVID time, and I travel now. And the differences in the amount of people traveling is unreal. The, the flight to Key West today was 100% full. Um, when I left, it was 100% full leaving. There, I have groups coming back. We are in D.C. tomorrow. It's 100% full. The amount of people that are traveling and the cost of traveling is extreme. I couldn't leave it off. <laughs> you notice I didn't put hair, because nobody wants to see me if my hair is not something done. But nails are a want. Okay? Alright, let's talk about some difference. Okay, if, if a need is reliable transportation, what's a want? Give me an example. Fancy, fancy car. Fancy, fancy car. Like what? What are we dreaming of these days? Oh, Cadillac. We got a Range Rover. Come on. Ooh. All right. I bet she's got the color all picked out and everything. Okay, so reliable transportation down here, depending on what you're, what you do, what you do for a living, some of you uh, drive for Keys Energy, or you drive for the city of Key West, and you need a bicycle to get you to work, or you need a scooter to get you to work, or maybe you need a pickup truck to get you to work. Reliable transportation is going to be different for everybody, and it's actually going to be different for us here than it is if you live in D.C., for example, where zero people drive other than Ubers and taxis. Um, but our reliable transportation can be a little less, knowing that at any moment, during particular months of the year, there could be a lot of salt water in it. Um, don't necessarily need a BMW, that is 100% a want. Now, in my house, this is 100% a need. You don't want to, we don't want to talk about it if this does not happen. But, needing coffee and wanting there you go. I mean, Cuban coffee thing can be a little pricey too, but needing coffee, coffee, that's, that's Folgers stuff. And I say that, I actually roast coffee. So you, you need coffee, you don't need Starbucks. And if you need Starbucks, maybe you need Starbucks once a month. Okay? So you need coffee, you do not need Starbucks. You need food, you do not need out of that. <laughs> it's like I, I planned it all out for you. Santiago's bodega. El Cibonet. Chico's. I'm hungry. Okay, you need food, you don't need to eat out. Um, in our house, we this is just something that we do. We have a little cash envelope. And if there's money in the envelope, that can be used to go out, to dine out. Only what's in the envelope. So if you got 20 bucks in there, I don't know where you're going. I don't even, not even. My son plays, my oldest son played basketball for Marathon High School, no kidding. We're leaving the, the high school game one night, it's nine o'clock, there's no dinner at home. And I said, we're gonna go through Wendy's. What should I get? My son is not my size. He is taller and he is thinner. And he said, I need 50 chicken nuggets. <laughs> I said, you do not need 50 chicken nuggets. What? Who's eating those? Well, I'll give, I'll give a couple to Colin. That's the 13 year old. The 13 year old says, I need a couple of those uh, bacon, whatever they are, baconator things. I'm like, all right, we're not going to Wendy's anymore. I'll just stop at Publix and I'll get a rotisserie chicken or something. You guys can just eat what I give you. But so there's, you need food. You don't need to eat out. We use the cash envelope. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey says, you know, back in the day, you just put a bunch of little envelopes. This was my car payment. This was my rent. This was my dining out. Well, it doesn't really work like that anymore with all the electronic payments. Um, so we just, if, if I have an extra 20 and it goes in there, great. 
if we're looking for where to go and we have $100, we know we have $100 to spend for four people to eat out. Where are we going? I don't care, but we're not spending more than $100. And that includes tip, by the way. So do some little calculations, little boys. So you need food you don't need to eat up. Save. What do you have to save for? My air conditioner, evidently. Car repairs, braces, appliances, medical. Oh, by the way, the down payment for the house. There's plenty of stuff to save that, that you need to be saving for. Um, unexpected expenses. So my, again, I use my sons all the time. The one of them was 13, the one of them was 17. We actually dropped our age on our debit card to 14. My kids have always played sports. I played three sports at Marathon High. And we used to go, you know, you have to go to Miami. Anybody play for year anywhere? Okay. You have to you have to go to Miami for all your games. You go to Miami and you know, you get back at midnight, you go back to class, and then you go the next day back to Miami. And I used to get like fifteen dollars. And that was like if you stopped for lunch in Florida City at the McDonald's before the game, and then on the way back Jim Sakura would stop at Burger King or something, and you get your you spend your little seven dollars each time and you're all set. Fisher, my eldest, says to me, going on the away game today, I need 30 bucks. I said, where are you stopping? Publix. What do you need for $30 at Publix? Well, we're stopping at Chipotle on the way home. Okay, all right. So this started when he was like a freshman. Three games a week times two kids. I go, Time out. One, if it's not healthy, I'm not paying for it. So I want to know what you're getting at Chipotle, number one, Publix, whatever. Two, we're going to use a debit card. Because what would happen is they would come back. Here, there's your uh, 77 cents from the $20 you gave me. And now I need it again. And I, I mean, I never knew. Is it, is it five? You don't want to send your kid with nothing. So these... These things kind of pop up. Oh, it's a trip to the Everglades for the kids. Yay! We need $25. Okay, well, you just told... Uh, you're, I'm finding out on Monday. You're leaving on Tuesday. So these are some of the things that you need to consider when... It's not a, it's not a known expense, it, but you need to kind of keep it in that, that savings category. All right. You guys ready to get started? Have you thought about all of your expenses? You guys have pens? You have pens? Okay, so we're going to do it together. There are no wrong answers. Oh, I feel like we're passing out a Scantron sheet in high school. Just bubble in the whole bubble. It's timed. It's not timed. It is not timed. I have, I have 23 copies, so there should be plenty. Um, no? Two? Uh, Okay, we're gonna do this together. You can put up you can put up your stuff so nobody sees you. You can put in pretend numbers. This if, if you're not comfortable putting in real numbers because somebody next to you can see it, that's fine. That's fine. We're just gonna go through the idea of, of what we're listening of, of what we're doing here. Okay, you guys know what we talk about. Everybody, everybody was, was following along. We're going to start with your work income. Okay, your work income, I'm going to tell you to put what? Gross or net? Net. Because gross is not coming home. Gross is not coming home. So you're going to put the monthly amount. Now, if you have two jobs or you have a, a, a full-time job and a business, you've got a side hustle, you're going to use work income line two and just put another little dollar amount. Maybe it's a hundred bucks. But only if you can count on it. Otherwise, maybe it goes in that env little envelope that you can go out to dinner on. Now, one of the things we didn't talk about here is if you receive child support. If you receive child support, that is income. Okay, so you're gonna wanna put that down because guess what? If you're receiving child support for a child, you're spending on that child too. Okay, so you're, those, those expenses are going to go there also. Oh, 
I'm sorry. You want one or two? Just one. Okay, if you'll look right here, I'm not rushing you at all. If you'll look right here, this little asterisk is an um, I don't know. Okay, that means you're going to come back to it when we're, there's not a group of 20 of us in here. You're not sure. Maybe you put $100 and it was 110 Maybe you put $110 and it's 95 If you're not sure and you need to double check that amount, then just put a little asterisk there. This is, you're not turning this back in. This is not for me. This is for you. Now you'll notice when you get down into the expenses. When you get down into the expenses, we tried to come up with every single little expense that we could think of, including pet insurance. <laughs> By the way, it's very expensive. <laughs> um, there's life insurance, auto insurance, home insurance, health insurance. You're not gonna, you probably don't have home insurance now if you're renting, maybe you have renter's insurance. So don't put it down. You would wait until you had the down payment and you were approved for your home, then, then you would use this sheet again. And I'm going to give you a different sheet to take home to make copies of and have forever and ever. Just to remember how much fun you have. Okay, so who's done? Everybody done with income? No? No? You're making that much money that you can't, you can't remember it all. Okay. If there is an other, okay, my son sometimes works for my brother. He knows when he works for my brother, it's once a month and it's $40 or whatever. He could put that under the other, if you know that. There are a lot of us, I, I, have, other, I have more than one job. Like I, uh, Hannah said, I teach for the college. Um, that's gonna be work income number two. When I sell coffee, it's other. Um, Okay, so income is all set. Okay, on the expense side, electric, right now, today. Not, not when you own a home, not six months ago during December, no, I guess that wasn't six months ago, uh, October, November. How many of you pay attention to your electric bill? You'd have to. Yes. So, does it fluctuate? Oh. Okay. When is it most expensive? Two months and they have to be completely different. July and December. Oh no. no, no, no. December was our cheapest month because we had no heat. <laughs> we have well, eat in December, so we have our portable valve. Alright. So what we have found in my house. Because my kids go away for the summer, so July is not too bad. But December is is one of our more expensive months. Outside of heat, what can you what do you what are you thinking about in December? Christmas lights. It's unreal. I'm like, what is going on? I don't have any heat on. My windows are open. What are we spending money on? Um, so December. So. I only say that it might be totally different for you. For you, it might be July and August, it might be July and September, get ready to go back to school, it's hot as you know what. Um, pay attention to that. You get the bill that shows you know, what, what month went up, because what you don't want is to budget out every single penny and then get a $470 electric bill when you thought it was $225. Okay, so water, electric, home ownership fees. You don't pay them now, but again, you're going to use this worksheet later. You may pay something like a home ownership, home ownership fee later. Insurance, health insurance, home insurance, auto insurance, life insurance. Some of those might be bundled up into your check. And if they are, you can put them over on the side, but with a little note that, hey, they already come, they come out before that net. So you don't really need to factor them in on the expense. You just need to remember that they might fluctuate. Okay? Loan payments, if you have a credit card, if you have a car loan, if you have a student loan, if you have a debt consolidation loan, any of those loans, like I said, the last thing you want to do, one of the last things you want to do as you're entering this whole process of, of saving money so that you can get a down payment is to skip a, a credit card payment and watch your credit score go down. 
Giselle's going to talk about that next week, I think, um, and she's going to help you out there. But whatever you have to do, you got to, you got to, if you've got loans, you've got to make those loan payments. Groceries. We didn't cover toiletries um, specifically, but there's stuff that you, you need shampoo, you need conditioner. You don't need to have your hair done. I mean, maybe I do. Um, but there's food and there's toiletries. If those are separate expenses, I have a, a quick funny story. I gave um, my wife a separate debit card, and I said, this is only to be used for groceries. This is our grocery budget. I've put $800 in there. This was probably 15 years ago. I've put $800 in there, and that should be plenty for a family of four. It is not. It is not even close. And so what, what I was hoping was going to happen was that we curb some of the, the grocery spending. What actually happened is I almost got a divorce because she got declined at Publix. So, not a good idea. <laughs> but, no, I mean, the, the point is, you're going to budget for that, and you're going to miss your mark a few times. Um, eggs, everybody's talking about eggs, $11, $9, $6, whatever they are. I'm certain you didn't budget for that. I didn't. And then as your kids grow older, believe it or not, they eat more. I don't get it. Uh, $30 at Chipotle, I will remind you. Um, you know, expenses, that that, mar that um, grocery expense is 100% variable. Um, doctor visits, we like to all say we're, you know, healthy, um, clean bill of health. Dental visits, if you go to the dentist, you have to consider co-pays. Regardless of how well you guys are covered under your health insurance, maybe without, with the exception of you guys, you know, but but there is there there are there are there's some copays um, or some after whatever after adjustments. Um, you have to keep that in mind. Prescriptions, like I said, if you have a prescription, that you can't leave that off the list. Uh, transportation, car maintenance, oil changes, uh, you know, tires. If you know you're going to need tires once every, however, hopefully it's not once a year. Uh, you want to divide that and just put a little bit down, okay? You're actually going to end up putting that over on the savings side because it's not a it's it's not an annual expense. It shouldn't be. I don't know about scooters. How how often do scooters go through tires? Anybody know? Not often. Okay, parking. Parking. You guys are pretty lucky with that whole residential thing. I can spend thirty dollars one pop going to another branch, but parking can be an issue. Ride sharing, if you don't have transportation, ride sharing, include that. Public transportation, dropping down to the internet and cell phone. Um, there are digital subscriptions here. Notice I'm not the one that's saying whether these are wants or needs. These are just expenses. Okay, we're just being honest. We're just putting down, I have Netflix, I have Prime, I have Hulu, I have Apple TV, I have HBO, I have Comcast, I have all of it. And I don't know when you watch it. Okay, so you want to list all of those. Go on to the next page, TV and cable, if you have it. Maybe you don't need it, if you do. Uh, video games. Anybody play video games? You do. For free. Okay, if you're somebody that, that is a, a gamer and you play games and you do $9 a month or whatever, okay, clothing. You do, in fact, need clothing. You need clothing, you need shoes. Maybe you need some accessories. Guys, I know about your accessories. Uh, I'm just kidding. Entertainment. Again, not deciding whether these are wants and needs. We're just saying, I'm looking at my last few months of what I'm spending, and have I, have I been to the movies? I couldn't tell you the last time I went to the movies. That's, that's probably pretty expensive. Um, bars and clubs, that's a surefire way to get some money right out of your account. Uh, sporting events, I had to pay to go watch my kid play in districts. Like 20 bucks. I'm like, wow, okay. Um, personal care, health care with the gym, haircuts, nails, your pets, that includes groomers, your pet wants, toys, um, travel, travel, everybody, I think everybody raised their hand about travel. And travel includes hotels, flights,
fuel, food, tickets to Beyonce. Can we add one more on the expenses, like the kids? Of course. Well, like, uh, you know, piano lessons. Yep. Like yep, of course. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's this isn't a live or die kind of thing. Uh, this was just that we tried to, my, my sons play the piano, um, they have lessons, it's like once a month, it, you know, it's not, it, it doesn't amount to too much. But sure, I mean, you know, keep going, yeah. keep writing them all down. Um, now, when you get to, when you get to the end, there's a blue box that you're going to add all your income. And it's going to be doomsday because you're going to fill in all these over here and you're, there's another blue box that maybe should be red and it's going to say expenses and that's going to be your total. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to say income minus expenses equals, hopefully, you're not backwards. Okay, is your income higher than your expenses? Very, very easy. I make $1,000, I spend $800. Okay, woohoo! Yay! You make $5,000, you spend $4,000. Also good. Yay! Okay, that's what we're going for. Woohoo! But it's possible, probably a little bit possible, that your expenses are higher than your income. Now, that leaves you a couple choices. What are your choices? Earn more money. Make more money. I don't know about you, but I think the last time I checked, there's still only 24 hours in a day. Last time I mapped it out. So, you can find a way to make more income. Sometimes, though I'm not necessarily recommending it, sometimes it means finding a different job. Okay, sometimes it means I'm making $20 an hour now. And I can go over here and I can make 27. And though I love this place, I got, I got, I got, oops, I got some problems. So you either need to find a way to make more money legally, um, or you need to find, <laughs> find a way to spend less. Um, now, how can you spend less? The, the thing about my kids is 100% true. My eldest son comes home and he says, you said I need shoes. And I said, yeah, clothing, you need shoes. And he said, I found the shoes I want. I said, you used a key word there, want. He said, I found the shoes I need. Okay, where are they? There's some fancy gold and white black shoe made by Nike, it was some whatever. And I said, what are you gonna use this for? You, I said you needed basketball shoes. That looks like something you're going to wear to a club in Miami Beach. What? That's not a need. I said, I need for you to find a pair of basketball shoes so that you don't have shin splints. I don't, it, these shoes don't look like anything you're going to be wearing on a basketball court. Maybe you should have. Maybe Michael Jordan did one day. But those are not, and they were $380. Did you get two of them back? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get rid of the dog. <laughs> but I said, why are they so expensive? What? I, and I mean, I, I'm not that old, but I feel really old when I talk. And I'm like, bud, I this you have your own money. Remember, not the thousand dollars, just the seven hundred. I'll tell you what I was gonna put toward your basketball shoes. If you want to put the rest, by all means, have it. You're a big boy. You make some money. But no, you don't need those shoes. And so it it's really is a conversation. I talk a lot about kids, but it's also the same with your, with your partner, uh, spouse. Uh, you know, do we need a new fishing hat? Do we need a new fishing shirt? Uh, do we need a boat? I, you know, I don't know. That's, that's you guys decide. But one of the ways to reduce expenses, because you either have to make more money or you have to reduce expenses, you need to check those monthly subscriptions. If you've got Apple, you don't necessarily need, or if you have Apple TV, you don't necessarily need Netflix and Hulu. If you have Hulu, you don't necessarily need Netflix. If you've got all those, you don't necessarily need Comcast Television or DirecTV. Um, maybe you do. Maybe those are your needs. I don't know. But you need, to check them. you need to check them out anyway. One of the tips I give people is pick up the phone. I know. I know they exist more for texting, but pick up the phone. 
or get on one of those little chats with Comcast and say, I, I'm getting ready to drop this because I don't really need it. Can you do anything about my bill? It doesn't hurt to ask. You can do that with loan payments. You can do that with car insurance. You can do that with Comcast. You can do that with ATT. You can do it with Verizon. I can keep going and going because you know what? All it is is a question. Is there any way for me to reduce my bill? No? Okay. I'll have to decide if it's a want or a need. So you want you you want uh, to check those those subscriptions, optional choices. Sometimes, not now because the rate environment has gone straight up. Um, sometimes it makes sense. Maybe you got a maybe you got a debt consolidation loan when your credit score was 600. Maybe you got it when it was 550. Maybe you got it when it was 500. Now it's up into the 600s or it's up into the 650s. You're looking good. It's possible, again, with a phone call, you never know if you don't call, to say, hey, can I reduce that payment? I think my credit got better. Can I reduce that payment? Can I reduce that car loan payment? Um, some of us, so I grew up in the era where you didn't have a longer car loan than five years. Okay. Others probably grew up when it was, you didn't have a car loan period. You had a car loan for three years. Now it's not uncommon. I mean, I live in, live and breathe the industry. People do putting car loans out over seven and eight years. You gotta really look at the whole want versus need thing. Like, do we need to be driving $90,000 pickup trucks in the Florida Keys? If you're not pulling a boat or construction or something like that, I'm not certain that that's what you need. Um, so anyway, check credit card balances, lower payments, um, refinance some loans if you need to, pay your bills on time. I just went and met with the department, nope, somebody at the treasury <laughs> about late fees. And when they're one day late, one day, your fees, somebody in DC, their, their business license was $190 for the year. And if they were late by one day, it went to $440. That hurts. That's a big, that, that's a hurtful mistake. That's a hurtful scheduling error. Okay? So, so pay your bills on time um, so that you're, you're not, you know, you're, you're not having issues with uh, late fees. Look for sales, coupon offers. Uh, do this several times. Now, I have a different one, and I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm going to pass it out, and then I'm going to take questions, because we're going to wrap it up. <clears throat> Same thing, except if you'll notice, up here is every day of the month. I mean, every month, every day of the month. Every month of the year. So January is here, you circle it. This is what you're doing for January. I'm going to list what I budgeted, what my partner and I agreed to, what my kids and I agreed to. We agreed that we were going to spend... The electric bill was going to be $500 for the budget. Okay, then for the month of January or March, as is the case maybe, you're going to put what you did actually. Okay, what you're going to find is that this is a work in progress. Hopefully, you're going to over budget and underspend, um, but it's probably not the case. You're probably going to say, I need $115 for fuel this month, and then you're going to have to drive to Miami and it's going to end up being 130. Okay, it, it is, when I tell you it's a moving target, it's cyclical, um, I mean it. These, you can do whatever you want with them. We tried to, you can add to them, they're, they're just, um, that we created them just to try to help because if you sit down to do it, um, it, it will be helpful. Now, the last thing I want to just briefly cover is that whole savings idea, okay? Once you get your budget all set and you figure out that your income is $1,000 and your expenses are $800, you're left with what? $200. Okay, of those $200, you want to save and you want to spend. Okay, we're going back to that 75, 15, 10. Okay, 75, when you figure out that you've, you've spent with all your needs and stuff, you got that 75%. Don't forget to save, because what are you saving for? What's everybody in the room saving for, other than a vacation? I know that part. Emergencies. Emergencies, what else? Oh, being here in 
Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Um. Yes, you. You're saving for a house. Hopefully, every one of you said you wanted to stay here. Well, while you're staying here renting, you're putting money in somebody else's pocket. You know that, okay? You're getting ready to try to put the money back in your own equity, your own place, something you call your own. You got to save that. Now, I don't care where you save it. I don't care where you save it. If you want to put it under your bed, teach his own. Put a sock, sock drawer. Different people grew up in different eras. Couple things to do. One, save it. Two, my recommendation would be put it somewhere that you can access it, but not so fast. I would not put it where I have my check go. Okay, I have my check go, and then I transfer my $200 because I'm gonna save that this month. And then, whoop, oh, Fisher needs new shoes, I'm gonna move that $200 back over. No, it's too easy. It's too easy to grab that $200 for whatever it is. Maybe you went out to dinner and you bought 50 chicken nuggets. But it's too easy to transfer that money over. So either put it separately, so at the credit union you have different memberships, you can put it in a different membership. You, can, If you're a credit union person and you want to put it at First State Bank, put it at First State Bank. If you're at First State and you want to put it at Bank of America, put it there. Great. So that you actually have to do some work to go get it. Okay, it's not just... Oh, I'm just going to quick transfer here and all it's all gone. Okay? What I would advise you not to do is do investing in things like crypto. Doesn't mean there's not money in it. Doesn't mean I don't do it myself. One of the interesting statistics about crypto, though, is that the average crypto investor is making under $50,000 under $50, household per year. You don't need to be investing in crypto if you're making $50,000 as a household a year. You just don't. If you want to put pennies over there and watch the penny stock do, whatever, the penny coin do whatever it's going to do, so you can live out your dream, great. You want to play the lottery, same thing. But, but you actually need to save. And the savings has to be done in, in, intentionally. Then what you're left with is the little bit of money that you're going to go live your best life in Key West and remind yourself of why you do Okay? When you get savings to a certain point, you may then want to invest it. That's beyond this discussion. But what you'd really like to have set up somehow structured at any institution you want, checking, savings, different institution, XYZ investment second savings account. This everyday transactions going all over the place. This is where my check comes in, my check goes out, and all the things. This is for your down payment on your house. You can have multiple savings accounts. Maybe you say for those $200, I'm going to put $150 toward my house down payment, and I'm going to put $50 toward emergencies. Great. But the $200 is saved somewhere. Rainy day, they call it rainy day. I'll tell you what is a real rainy day is a hurricane. Okay, so you need you need a savings account. You need the savings account somewhere. Um, our accounts are reverse structured so that they pay the most dividends up to twenty five hundred dollars, and then the dividends start going down because we want you to move that twenty five hundred somewhere else. Okay, so your first goal is what? What are you gonna What are you gonna do tonight, or maybe tomorrow, or maybe this weekend? You're going to budget. You're going to sit down with whoever it is you sit down with. Maybe you sit down by yourself. That's cool, too. It makes it really easy. can't blame anybody else, though. Okay, you're going to sit down and you're going to do a budget. It's going to be eye-opening. Keep going. It's going to be eye-opening. You're going to be like, oh, my God, this is never going to happen. Keep going. You made a great first step. Okay? You're going to sit down with whoever this person is because you're going to get buy-in on that. Once you do your budget, then what are you going to do? Get rid of the dog. Get rid of the dog. I thought, so my son is a golfer. And he got, he's going to go to college to play golf. And so they told me, Mom, you got a full ride. And I was like, OMG, I have money in a savings account that I thought was going to be used for him for college. And now I'm going to buy him a car. And then the, the coach said, it's all contingent on things. I'm like, what does that mean? Can I spend it? 
Are we allowed to call him? So the recommendation was, even though he is going to college, far, far away from his mother, I am supposed to keep saving for him, even though he's not spending it. And I said, uh, okay. So he, it, outside of the realm of the conversation, he has a 529 or something like Florida prepaid. And basically I was just asking, do I keep paying into this? If there's, like, what happens? And they said, well, four years from now when he's all finished, or five, however long that takes, uh, you'll get that then. Provided he doesn't want to go around for a master's degree, but I want to go, but payroll, done. So if you have older kids, there's obviously going to be some other stuff that goes into all of that budgeting um, because back to school is going to be a little refrigerator, all the things. So are there any questions? An open book. Does anybody want to buy a dog? <laughs> the dog is probably pretty expensive. <laughs> I got two of them, and they're big, and they eat a lot. Chewy. If Chewy shows up at my house one more time, Chewy.com. Like, what is this? The dogs need toys. No, the, with this whole need word, the dogs don't need toys. The dogs need to run. Right? Oh. So you don't you don't you don't have a high maintenance man, you have a high maintenance dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you got? What questions do you have? How can I help? You guys ready to go? If you're starting a budget now, but you're starting and you're already in a hole, what are some suggestions if you're starting in the negative? to get out of that hole and to move forward with the budget. So Giselle's going to talk to you next week about, about building credit or rebuilding credit. It may be, I don't know, I don't know your situation. I want to know it, I don't want you to share. Um, okay. So if, <laughs> an expensive dog. So if you're spending more than you make, you, the first things you have to look at are the subscriptions. You got you to try to make that, that expense go as far down as you can get it to go down so that you can get the bleeding to stop. Okay, right now you're bleeding. You're bleeding money. You got some money coming in. I mean, when, when the whole air conditioner thing happened, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I don't know what someone that doesn't make the kind of money that I make would do. Now, I do budget myself to probably a $5 difference per month. But that includes, okay, I've got 500 going for that savings account for that kid, I got 300 going. So what I did is I went and I said, I need some of that. <laughs> I, got, I got problems. But that's what savings does. You, you're in a different spot. You've got to get the bleeding to stop. And in order for the bleeding to stop, you're going to have to really look at the wants and needs. And, you're, and your kids too. You guys legitimately need to sit down with them and say, this is where we're at. I, I have said to my kids, no, we're not doing that tonight. Hey, day is tomorrow. And they go, oh. Like they don't know, what, but they don't. How, how's a 13 year old, or how old are you? How's a nine year old gonna know when you get paid? You know, I mean, maybe they don't. <laughs> they figured it out. But so, short answer, you're gonna have to really delve down into the, we have got to get this to stop because we've made the decision that we wanna own. We want to have a home, and a, and a home is more important than the Air Jordans, and the home is more important than the $30 at Chipotle. There has to be something else you can do. Now, the other thing about kids is that sometimes, depending on how old they are, they can help. They can, they can get, mine went and got a job. And then some of those expenses, I see her looking at you, she's got, she got you all in. <laughs> so, so I didn't ask my 17 year old to go get a job to help me with household expenses. I'm not asking them to pay electric, I'm not asking them to pay water. What I'm saying is if you want Air Jordans, then you go for them. Because I'll give you the, the 100, I thought I was going to be spending 150, $160 on a pair of basketball shoes. He was like, I don't know how old you are, but that hasn't been that way for a long time. I said, okay, they still have soles, right? And they lace up the same way. I felt like my dad. Um, but I did expect him then to use his money for some of his wants which then cut down on some of my expenses. It's never too early. We have, you know, um, Hannah and I were talking ahead of time. 
We have three apps on our website that are all about financial education, and they're all free. I don't care if you're a, a member of the credit, I mean, I do care, but you don't have to be a member of the credit union. There's an app called Zogo that's for kids. Um, you, you go out to our website, you have to put a code in, it's like KFCU or something, but it's Zogo, there's Bonsai, and there's Coffee, K-O-F-E. Coffee produces a certificate that we use, um, we're trying to get businesses to use that basically say, I attended a little class on budget. The kids, it's a literal app on their phone, and it's called Zogo. And they learn about, this is income, this is expenses, this is, and it's all free. And when they finish the little modules, they get an Amazon gift card. So if you have kids, maybe consider that. We're trying to get that into the, into the schools to help them for free. Um, because there is, whether you call them spoiled, entitled, whatever, I did it. Whatever I did, I did. It, whether they're spoiled or not. They, they know how to work, but they know how to spend for sure. Um, and so it, it wouldn't hurt to get the kids buy-in on it too. You're going to have to be real tough on the whole wants and needs. Maybe, maybe your 75, 15, 10 looks like 85, 10, 5. And there's not too much, there's not too much left over for too much fun. But, and, and there's not too much left over to save. You don't want to be putting money into a savings account that you don't have. Like, you don't need to get late fees on credit cards so that you can put money in a savings account. Okay? What else? So, when you're talking about investing, um, you're talking about investing through your bank or through another separate entity in the bank or just, just make sure you do some investing. Do, do some savings first. Savings just in a savings account. Take that. Because really, when you go to invest, so you go to invest at Raymond James, you go to invest at Edward Jones, all of the different uh, Schwartz, um, JB, whatever it is, Chase, Smith Barney, whatever they're all called now. Um, you go to maybe Robin Hood, whatever, whatever your thing is. Uh, yeah, some, some broker. You go to them and they say, so what do you have as an uh, opening account? And you go, well, I haven't saved yet. Typically, they want to see $1,000, $2,500, $5,000. That's why at the credit union, different banks do it different ways. We say, save in your savings account until you get the $2,500, and then go put it, talk, go sit down and talk to somebody that does this for a living. I don't do investing for a living. I'm a, I'm, I don't even know it. Um, but I'm not, a, I'm not an investor. I, I have degrees, but they're not in investing. I've got two master's degrees and a bachelor's degree, and not one of them are in investing or finance. So I'm not going to tell you where to go, but you would go to a brokerage, you would take your down payment, and, or your, your, your down opening account, account opening balance, um, and you'd be all ready to open whatever. They're probably going to say, well, tell me how risk averse you are, and probably just like that. Um, how much do you want to make? Are you aggressive? Are you, you know, how old are you? Because they're going to put you in an investment that they recommend based on your risk. So at 44, my age, I'm starting to get a little more risk averse. I don't want as much risk. Um, at 24, I was like, buy all the things with all of the investments. I'll do crypto, I'll do Bitcoin, I'll do all of them because I didn't care. I was 24 years old and I didn't have kids. And well, as you start to get older, you start to get more risk averse. And so they'll sit down and talk to you about that. Like, you know, how do you, how do you want to do this? But there are plenty of people in town, Edward Jones, Raymond James, I know those off the top of my head, but there's others. You can do it online, you don't have to, but you're gonna need, you're gonna need a starting account balance. So the first thing you have to do is get that savings going. That's it.